Characterization of the full thickness of an ice core or block after extraction will reveal snow, snow ice, ice thickness, and bubble patterns in the ice. Uh, though this, I think, these bubbles... Thin sectioning will allow a three-dimensional characterization of ice crystal size, shape, and orientation. This information can then be correlated with weather data to unveil the history of winter in the ice. The following basic steps compose the ice core and thin sectioning protocol. Whenever working outside for extended periods of time, be assured that appropriate clothing is worn. At the start, it is important to record all location data and atmospheric information, characterizing the condition of the day. Assess the lake location for safety, and then proceed to auger a hole in the ice in order to determine ice thickness. Using an ice coring drill or chainsaw, cut and extract the full depth of the lake ice. Examine the extracted ice and determine the snow cover, snow ice, and lake ice thickness while looking for bubble patterns and other features. From the full ice depth sampling, prepare vertical and horizontal sections and thin them to approximately one to two millimeters. Optimally, this procedure should be performed in minus 10 degrees centigrade conditions. All tools must also be at the same temperature. Examine the sections and cross polarizers on the light table. Place the first piece of polarizer film on the light table, then place the glass slide with the ice section on top of the first piece of polarizer film. Next, place the second piece of polarizer film at a 90 degree angle to the first. Crystals of ice should appear pastel colored in cross polarized light. If not, the thinning process should be repeated until the desired colors are produced. It is important to note the size and orientation of crystals in the ice. Snow ice is formed from snow falling on the surface of the lake and mixing with liquid water and refreezing. The sources of water can include meltwater and rainwater. Lake water permeating the snow after cracks in the ice form is a consequence of the overburden weight of the snow. The layers in the snow ice represent individual meteorological events that have occurred in the history of the ice. The formation of these layers is similar to geological stratigraphy. The presence of dense bands of trapped air bubbles indicates a rapid rate of freezing under very cold conditions. The absence of dense areas of bubbles indicates slow freezing under warmer conditions. Beyond lake ice, ice can also be obtained from water buckets left outside in freezing temperatures. It's also possible to gain an understanding of the history of the freezing of ice 